hunt some vampires with our brother. Oh no! I just realized I might not be able to get out. Oh no, I smell burnt toast. I think I'm having a stroke. Am I having a stroke? Oh no, there's leaves on fire. What's up, it's Casey from Casey's Customs. I am building the 67 Impala from the TV series Supernatural, but naturally we got it bagged so it's laying on the ground. And in this video, I built the floor from scratch. Let's get to work. We are back on the beautiful 67 Impala from Supernatural. This don't feel right. Uh, hold on a second. That is a lot more like it. We are back on the 1967 Impala that I am building to look like the Impala from the TV series Supernatural. I have wanted one of these cars for 15, 15 years. years. It is a four-door hardtop. It's only like a one-year car. It's just a pain in the ass. They're hard to find. They are expensive as hell, too. I tell people all the time, a four-door hardtop 67 costs more money than a two-door hardtop. People always tell me I'm wrong. I promise you these damn things are just so much money. Anyways, finally got one. Naturally, I wanted one with a little bit of hot rod style. That's kind of what we do here at the shop. So I put it on a 90s Chevy Caprice. It's got the LT1 V8. And with our modern chassis, we have channeled the body. That's why she's laying on the ground. It already has airbags. I got started doing some of the framework before, and then I needed to order some parts. So she has sat actually for a couple months here. We've had some really cool builds that have popped off on the channel. So we kind of focused on them some more, but she obviously isn't going anywhere. We're getting back on it. I have the steering column. I have a bunch of stuff to finish the stuff under the hood. I didn't have all the wiring to the car. I finally got all that so we can make sure that we need everything to get the engine to run. We can get the steering column in there. I think what I'm going to start doing today though is just continue on the floor and we still have to mount the body. The body's kind of sitting on there but not great. So I think I'm just going to dive in there and start connecting some of this together let's go i'll be honest with you she's a little bit mad at me because she's been sitting outside it took a lot longer than i care to admit to open those two doors everything just froze but it's fine get to look in here i didn't know what i was gonna do after looking at it for about two seconds i think it's best this is 3 16th plate i got it on both sides i think i'm just gonna run this all the way right to the bottom of those put a little bit of a bend in them here and that's gonna tie all that in be really really strong and i want to put a bolt back here somewhere so i'll have two bolts in the front, two bolts in the back for the body. And once I have both of those tied in, we can run a couple pieces of square tubing across and then hopefully get some sheet metal in this old girl. As usual, I'm doing the thing where, you know, I point and say, oh, then it's like a hundred hours worth of work. But uh, yeah, let's cut some. This is 20, uh, yeah. Working with plate is a giant pain in the ass. Takes forever to cut, takes forever to weld, but it's strong as hell. Check this out. This was a stupid step bit on Amazon. I think it was 10 bucks. Some high seller, look at this. This is 3 16th plate. Nothing yet, just got it started, ready? You can just run this thing down with an impact driver. a lot of damage <laughs> these things are beasts this is i've probably had it for a month and i just lay into it <laughs> it's a it's a step bit that is made for impact drivers it's not just a regular drill you can actually just get on it sweet perfect half inch old it don't take much to make me happy also me and dad have been wearing the living shit out of these welding glasses <laughs> all right so here's what we're gonna do we are gonna weld these bolts on the frame rails and then this is gonna be our floor plate and it will go right over the top and then we'll be able to tighten this down weld this to the other plates and then that'll be your floor mount whenever i did the fronts obviously you really don't want this sticking up you'd rather have that going down i just don't have any room for it so what i'm gonna do is i'll tighten this down and then we'll cut it so it'll just be a nut it won't be sticking up it won't have threads it'll have to deal with whenever we get to mount on our floor and whatnot whenever i did the front i had a bunch of people going oh so it's just a metal on metal you know you don't have any rubber bushings 
You don't necessarily have to. You can do it either way if you want to. What I usually like to do is I used to do like a squish bushing. I can't remember what it's actually called, but it's basically just like a half inch polyurethane or rubber bushing, whatever you want to use. You just put it wherever the bolts go. So I'll have two up there, two up there, two up there, and that's enough. It's just enough to give it in. This is already an airbagged car, so you can get away with not doing it at all, but that's usually how I like to do them. You can also build a whole bracket to have a giant biscuit mount. I just don't really see the need to do that a lot of times. I've done it before. Kind of go either way. Airbags ride pretty damn soft anyway, so I usually don't worry about it, but... We're gonna weld this, then we can weld this to this, and finally get going on the sheet metal work. Let's go. Okay, 17, 22, 20. Don't forget, you gotta remember that. Seventeen. Seventeen, twenty. Shit. <laughs> you serious? Seventeen something twenty. <laughs> 17 something 20. 17 20 something. Damn, I'm gonna rewind the tape. <laughs> 17 22 20. Good job, you did great. See, you're helping out. Just about got all of the square tubing done. Yeah, I just want two more pieces back here and then we can start sheet metal work, which is exciting. That shit takes forever. Oh no, I smell burnt toast. I think I'm having a stroke. Am I having a stroke? Oh no, there's leaves on fire. Oh shit. There's a lot of leaves on fire. All right, we're good. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna put uh, two more pieces back here and then we're gonna start our sheet metal work. Aha! We got to a really good stopping point today. Got the rear started. Uh, I'm gonna come in tomorrow, do the rest of it. Floors take forever. This is basically two days worth of work and it just it's, doesn't even look like much yet. I'm gonna put a flat piece in here, but I think I'm just gonna tack weld it for now because depending on what seats I end up running, I might end up dipping this way down, basically making it like a bathtub, if that makes any sense. And then my seat will sink down just a little bit. I don't know that I'm gonna have to, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and just put a flat sheet there for now, because I've sunk all this way down, so we should be okay. But if I do need to, I can cut it out easily and just make a piece that has a bunch of curve in it. And then we'll do flat pieces up here, and then we'll start 
forming our drive shaft tunnel. I'm going to do that dead last. But uh, yeah, my ass is tired. So we're going to go to bed. Also, fun fact, whenever like decade old leaves that are like wedged in floor panels and stuff, whenever those catch on fire, you get the worst headache of your life, I'm finding out. So good times there. <laughs> We're gonna hit it again tomorrow. <laughs> the next day. All right, I got a couple hours to get this all done today before I get the video to Richard. I'm gonna get the floor the rest of the way done. I'm not bead rolling any of this, so it's saving me time, but you really should bead roll it. It'll take any oil can out of it. The reason I'm not doing it yet is because I don't know the exact seats I'm gonna put in, and this stuff might end up coming out. That's why I'm not welding everything fully yet. We're just kind of tack welding it. Well, stitch welding it and going. Also, a little bit ago, I was looking for seats. I have them somewhere, I just don't know where they are. I walked past the bumper for this. I have it out in my little storage shed. I really want to see it with the bumper on because it's so low. I think the bumper might be on the ground and it would look great. But this is more than enough work. But if we can get it done, I like to try and get the bumper mounted too. But let's focus on this. I'm doing the thing where I'm like, hey, let's, let's add more to it, even though we're trying to cram 20 hours worth of work in an eight hour day. So let's stop rambling and get to work. The air chisel is by far the loudest way to cut sheet metal, but it cuts really precise. I kind of like it. It's kind of old school, but I still like it. By the way, whenever I was broke and building cars, this is the only way I would cut metal. <laughs> This is probably one of the ugliest floors I've ever made, but that's okay. We're going for function, not prettiness. Because God, it's ugly. Okay. I got basically all the flat stuff done. I don't know if I'm gonna go any further yet until I get my steering in. What we need to do now is do our hump, which is a giant pain in the ass usually. Let's get started. You're supposed to use poster board for this. I can't find any. So we're gonna try and use cardboard. It's not gonna work very good, I promise. Did I just randomly cut this piece of cardboard and it fits? Holy shit! Oh! I swear I just cut this off. That looks like that might work perfect. <laughs> Holy sh! Okay, I'm glad I cut that on camera. I just cut this off the lid of something. <laughs> just in case you think I'm full of shit, this is just the lid to this box. And it looks like it's gonna work perfect. Now we gotta cut that out of metal. It's real easy, you just gotta throw it like this. <laughs> wait, 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 I, I did that wrong. I meant you throw it just like this. Oh, perfect. That's what we need. Now, we are gonna have to put some shape in this since it is our drive shaft tunnel. And the good news is, I have something specifically made to shape drive shaft tunnels. It's this abandoned basketball hoop pole. <laughs> I don't remember why we took the hoop off, but it's been gone for years. Let's move some metal, baby. This is 18 gauge, so it does not want to move easily, but it'll work after a while. I'm gonna pick the bigger piece. Let's see where we're at. Check it out. Fits pretty good. We gotta trim the back, obviously, because our floor goes up a little bit. So. Something like that ought to do it. Let's see what happens. All right, I was trying to fit the seats in this CRX because I'm finishing up the frame rails and that's the actual CRX seat. Check this out. I threw it in there and it actually looks perfect. I sit in there just fine. I'm still not gonna weld these floors solid just in case I, you know, change something. But uh, I think we're looking good, man. That ain't bad at all. Let me get in there real quick. Dude. 
go hunt some vampires with our brother. Oh no! I just realized I might not be able to get out. Yes! <laughs> I thought the hinge was broke. <laughs> Sweet! I got a little sidetracked with the chair. You know, it happens. I, I'm like a freaking goldfish. I see something and I change my mind. But drive shaft tunnel is looking good. I got it tacked on this side. I'm gonna go do the other side. Then we're gonna work on the back. And the front's gonna be a giant pain in the ass because it's not only radius, it has a cone to it because it gets wider at the front. But let's tackle one step at a time. We gotta finish this one up. Oh, oh that one does a oil can a little bit. Okay, we are looking good. I got one piece I'm going to do today, and I'm going to call it a video. I obviously need to do some more back there, and then some more down here, but my ass is dragging. This was a full, like, eight-hour day, just sprinting towards the finish line, and this piece is going to be probably the hardest one. I need a bunch of curve up here and a little curve down here because we got to clear that big-ass transmission. So, let's go take her to the basketball pole. My neighbor's giving me a dirty look, but I like that sound. They probably think I'm crazy. Mm, can't go too crazy with this one. We've got to go just gradual, 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 gradual. Clean it up with a grinder real fast because it looks like shit. Let's do that, then we're gonna weld a little more, then we're calling a video, baby! Check it out, got it all cleaned up. Very happy with how it looks considering we have, you know, quarter inch plate tied into sheet metal, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but I like it. There's still a little bit of stuff that needs done. And I got about 30 minutes left, and I'm like, should I start, you know, this rocker will get tied into there. I was like, should I start doing that? Or should we try and throw a bumper on? And naturally, I'm going to try and throw a bumper on. I want to see what it looks like. So let's do that in the very little amount of time I have left. <laughs> so Richard, the video editor, is usually the problem. Like, it's not true. 99% of the time. It's bullshit time. He's the worst. And he's a cop, so it's like, ugh. Anyways, I will say firmly the last couple have been me because... He really needs this video hours ago, but I really want to see the bumper on. So let's, you know, let's throw a bumper on. Screw it. It's a late night for him. Who cares? You know, whatever. <laughs> So this was gonna be a 30 minute job. It turned into a five minute job because I realized how shitty that bumper is. I knew one of the bumpers was bent. I could have swore it was the rear one. And I'm hoping now it's not both because I thought one was good and one was shitty, but I could have swore the rear one was bad. So I thought the front one was good. It's not, these are kind of funky shaped. So it was hard to tell. Once you start putting it against something flat, it's pretty easy to see this whole thing is twisted. Somebody pulled a chain from the bottom, so like untwisted it, which is gonna be impossible to fix. I'm gonna have to find another one. So I threw it up there and did like two of the quickest tack welds ever. I could kick this thing off if I wanted to, but fuck it. Ah, I could have swore I had a good front bumper, but I guess I don't. Let's wheel her outside, blow her out. I got leaves everywhere in the shop and uh, we're gonna call this a video. Man, I like that car a lot. Oh, I love it. I always forget how goddamn big it is until I start working on it again. Pushing it outside to hit the crane and it's still touching the door. I mean, 
<laughs> it's like two Honda Civics, or Honda CRXs rather. God damn, that thing's cool though. Very, very happy to get this floor done, man. Still got some more to do, but that is by far 90% of the work. I can button up the little firewall piece and this back piece pretty quickly. Shouldn't take but a half a day, so. I absolutely promise we will not, you know, take another two months before the next video on this guy. Really getting going on it, and uh, the Blazer's going in right now. So, had people asking, you know, why? what happened? Did you give up? No. This one just needed some parts. This one needed a couple parts, and the CRX and the $1,000 Mustang just blew up, so I naturally did more videos on them, but these guys ain't going nowhere. This is like... I mean, that's basically the baddest blazer on the planet, and I've never seen one of the Supernatural cars play in rocker. <laughs> so, I love him so much. God damn, we're building some cool shit around here lately. Oh, here's a little inside baseball for you. I always like to stand outside and take a look at the car at the end of the video. This fucking thing, I basically have to go to the middle of my alley because it's so goddamn big. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Stay tuned, we are going to be doing more work on this. I am not going to wait another couple months before I get another video done, I absolutely promise. Also, we got more CRX videos coming up and the Blazer is coming in right now. So we're gonna be jamming on the Blazer. I had a lot of people asking about it. On my last video I said, what build do you guys wanna see more of? And I had hundreds of people say, get that Blazer back in here. I promise I didn't give up on it. If you are not subscribed, please hit that button now. It helps the channel a lot. For the coolest merchandise on the planet, go to caseyscustoms.com. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, comment, all the good shit they tell you at the end of videos. Check out some more of my other videos. Peace. I love you.